Chapter 33 The first form counselor sent to escort me, the same one who had spoken with my father under the cupola, was only a little older than me, twenty domestic years at most. He strode onto the platform overlooking a direct-view panorama of my family's world, addressed himself first to three members of the security team, then turned to me and smiled. This unseemly rictus shocked me. The humans might have been capable of such, but a first-form forerunner and a counselor at that. I met his slight bow and chest-touch salute with one of my own, executing it, I must say, with practiced grace. You are quite a sight, born Steller makes eternal, the counselor said, regarding my, I thought, distorted form with actual admiration. My name is Splendid Dust of Ancient Suns. My colleagues call me Dust. Is your mutation acceptable? It is what it is, I said, a puerile maxim. Again, the rictus. I did not like it. I have expert ancillas who can render you minimal adjustments, cosmetic mostly, but I must say this combination of traits has a distinct attraction. Combination, I said. A scan upon boarding confirms that you neatly combine mental and neurological structures of warrior servants and builders with a touch of life worker. That makes sense. It was a life worker who equipped the ship that guided your mutation and, I understand it, the didact himself who supplied the imprint. I listened and said nothing, judging that here was a forerunner who liked to talk and liked to dominate a room quickly and easily. All at once I had been admired, assessed, addressed in familiar tones, and put in my place, as someone who could use a good adjustment or two. But the didact within me was not easily suppressed. Which of my patterns derives from a life worker? Let's find out. Splendid dust. I could not bring myself to think of him as mere dust. Called up three tiny ancillas who hovered behind me on the bridge and prepared to take samples and guide probes. None of that, I swung around in some alarm. But splendid dust smiled again, then waved them off. Mysteries and surprises, he said. We can find out later, when it's appropriate, when you decide. But we are not here to measure or understand you. We are here to transport you to the capital. You have been summoned by the council to testify. What do the didact's memories tell you of forerunner defenses, past or present? Very little for now, I said. I remember and understand only what the didact would have understood at the time of my mutation. No doubt your ancilla has informed you the domain is experiencing difficulties. Yes. The council has stored a great deal of archival and even accounting material in the domain. Now we can't reliably access any of it. Fortunately, a ship like this carries sufficient knowledge to serve us for now. May I ask a personal question, counselor? Ask away. Your smile? I am part of a new pattern, more natural. Some call it atavistic, but rather than being subjected to many mutations over a matter of centuries, we undergo an economical series of changes over a single domestic year. Our end point is less rigid, less distorted and ornamental. Who's we, counselor? We come from builder families mostly, but a few among us are warrior servants. Be wary. The didact would, of course, object to this deviation from tradition. At least I presumed that was the cause of his reaction. Splendid dust continued. This leaves us with fewer inherent distortions of both anatomy and mind, fewer prejudices, some say, less imprinted wisdom, as we have fewer mentors. We were in fact supposed to supplement that deficit with studious use of the domain, but that's difficult now. I feel the loss. How many more mutations will you undergo? None, he said. In a way, I am like you. We are what we are. And he smiled again. In silence, we studied the curve of my family's world. Will I ever be allowed to return? I asked after a few moments. I wouldn't forbid it. Practically, who can say? I studied him. He did not seem to mind. In their range and flexibility, 
His expressions reminded me of both young manipulars and human beings. I wondered if that was a good thing. No, I didn't like it much. And yet I liked humans, mostly. Then we were shunted out of planetary orbit, and my family's world grew small. Within a few more minutes, the council ship harnessed a great deal of vacuum energy to flatten the curve of our stellar orbit. And the planet where I was born vanished completely. How did you become a counselor? I asked. A number of my peers have been given, you might call them brevet appointments. My appointment is temporary. Revolutionary party. What about the master builder? Are we in a state of war? Forerunners have been in a clandestine state of war since the Didact defeated the human forces at Sharm Hakor. War against the flood? Soon enough, those details. Now, however, we are about to institute a supreme mantle court. The Phylarch of Builders has reinstated the core of warrior servants and joined with them to call for judicial proceedings. Matters both of law and strategy will be decided by the council and the court. No such proceeding had ever occurred in my father's lifetime, much less my own. Not good. Not good, I echoed that internal judgment. Perhaps, but necessary, the counselor said. When may I learn more about this state of war? Soon, I hope. Is the flood upon us? Ah, the flood. For 10,000 years, that threat has propelled the strategy and politics of forerunners everywhere and distorted some of us to the point where we would violate all we have stood for. We are now far more aware of what the flood was and what it has become. Most knowledge gives strength, Bornsteller. This knowledge, however, has nearly driven us mad. And I'm concerned it may have the same effect on you with your warrior imprint and all. He afforded me the same focused expression with which I had been scrutinizing him, and then smiled once more. Why? I asked. Because we have been told to give you and your Ancilla access to all the information carried in this council ship. Information withheld from all but a few forerunners for thousands of years. I myself have only been privy to key parts of it for a few months. With that, the young counselor had two of the ship's guards return me to my cabin to begin what he called, with a twist of his lips, my period of enlightenment.